Blackfeet's name for the grizzly bear was real bear. Everything else was something else. The grizzly, especially among the, the Plains Indians that lived near Yellowstone, was always a, a symbol more than anything else of courage, of power, an awesome being sent down on earth to humble men, to make men humble. Tomorrow we're going to be faced maybe with a situation where all of a sudden behind my back is a, is a bear. And he's going to be 10 times bigger than I am. And I'm going to maybe freak out, right? OK, that is Too not close. enough distance anymore to, to run, right? So what's then? You've got to stand your ground. If you uh, end up in close proximity to a grizzly bear with nothing to climb, is you have to stand your ground. And the way I, the way I do it, I'm not really sure how I do it, because it kind of happened so fast, it, it's almost intuitive. But I stand my ground like I'm another, possibly another grizzly bear, and a fairly dominant one. Because bears do this to each other all the time. Right. And during the spring, they're looking for prey. And if you run, you're just going to trigger a, that predator instinct, and you know, your meat. Let me ask you a question that comes up to my mm. mind right now. We are going, you said to me on the phone, we are not going to take guns or anything like that, right? Right. Can you explain well, a little bit okay, here? Well, OK, yeah, sure. I mean, everybody, it's the first thing everybody said to me, everybody obviously. Says, yeah, make don't sure go you got with a big gun. piece. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what is your answer to that? I'm sure you have one. OK, I, I love guns, right? I got nothing against guns. I, I right. have all kinds of them. But I never carry a gun in grizzly country. It would be uh, very unethical, very hypocritical for me to carry a big piece into grizzly country. When I'm supposed to be making a film that's going to help and benefit grizzly bears on their territory, and if everything doesn't go just right, <clears throat> blow them away with a 44 Magnum. And you're not worried about it? I'm not, it's not that I'm not worried. I just I think it would be, uh, it'd be poor taste. But I think there's another thing, too, that it's a little harder to explain. And that's, there's something about grizzly bears uh, that that gun gets between you and uh, uh, there's some kind of a primal experience you get with a grizzly bear without a gun that you wouldn't experience if you had a rifle or a yeah. pistol. And that's, uh, you know, the grizzly bear out there is the most dominant, the most powerful critter. It's not you. And your relationship to the bear is really altered by having to take that into stock. If you've got a gun, it doesn't happen to you that way. It's not a very easy thing to explain, but I hope by the end of this week you'll know what I mean. What are you doing now? Well, I'm trying to get some smoke on my clothes to cover up my foul human scent. To get what in your clothes? Smoke? Smoke, smoke. Nothing is more nauseating to a grizzly bear than a human being, apparently. And I think that smoking my clothes helps me uh, with grizzly bears. And the grizzly bear has the best nose in the animal kingdom, and he can pick up a human being from a mile away. And uh, so I use it every night. I stand in front of a fire, and I smoke my clothes. Well, I tell you one thing, whatever you helps, try it helps. Too. Yeah. I do it immediately. <clears throat> well, I think the idea... Like this, just standing like this there? As much as you can stand, yeah, you bet. But the idea out there is probably to be as invisible as possible. I think it's a proper way to behave in the wilderness. Well, I tell you one thing, I hope the whole week is going to be as strange as the first night. <laughs> Early the next morning, the two men find new grizzly signs near the camp. This is a grizzly take, Arnold. It was done sometime in the past week. The grizzlies have got huge claws, and when you find any sign like this, you know it's a grizzly bear. Black bears really don't dig. What do you mean they dig in a hole a grizzly bear? He, he's going after uh, some kind of rodent. Right. And this looks like a grizzly scat. And you can tell by the scat if you look close. See all that fur? See those little tiny jaws? Uh huh. Little. Okay. Well, those are those are voles or uh, pocket mites, and that's what they're doing. The grizzlies are digging along the burrow looking for, uh, looking for the nest, and then they're just, they're just living on mice this time of year. Now, let's move on. We can find fresher diggings. They proceed carefully, following Doug Peacock's amazing sense of where the man-shy grizzlies are and what they're doing at different times during the day. There's bears on it. Where? Yeah. That far hillside. Just before the trees, straight over, I see two bears. They're big, dark bears. Oh, come on. Look at I think they're probably very grizzly. They're very dark. Oh, I see it. I see it. I can't believe I actually see them. How do we get closer? OK. okay you can do We're going to go over to those trees and skirt this hillside very quietly. And if we have to, we'll move back into the trees. We'll test the wind. 
wind is coming right at us. It's perfect. I can see it in my own eyes now. They look like adult grizzlies. I've never seen adult grizzlies together. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go for it. This is exciting. Doug and Arnold approach the grizzlies from downwind and cautiously. A full-grown grizzly can weigh over 1,000 pounds. He can run over any terrain at 35 miles an hour and can break an elk's back with one paw swipe. His hearing and smell are among the best in the animal kingdom, but his eyesight is weak, and Arnold and Doug take advantage of that as they close in on the sow and her yearling. Mother Grizzly hears the camera, but with the trees breaking the shape of the men, and with no scent to identify them, she is so far only nervous. Once a grizzly identifies a man, the bear can be very unpredictable. Finally, this one makes Doug and Arnold out, and fortunately for them, decides to run. She and her yearling stop once to look back at this mysterious apparition, the feared and sudden presence of man. Believe that this is unbelievable, Doug. Man, I'm I glad can't you got believe to see it. it. We didn't scare him too bad, either. This is too much. She won't go far. Well, yeah, I hope she just heard the noise of this uh, camera and didn't know what it was. They rear when they don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, she'll be all right. I couldn't believe it. No, sir. That is fantastic. I'm glad you got to see it. I can't believe it. For 10,000 years, the grizzly was, with the Indian, co-dominant lord of this continent. Now, pushed into 2% of his original range, his numbers reduced by 400 times and is still being reduced by poachers and man's encroachment. It is trouble Doug Peacock is doing something about. I knew a long time ago that to fight to preserve the element of risk in wilderness, that element of risk here is synonymous with the grizzly bear. In that respect, the grizzly bear is true wilderness. All America was once this wild, untamed land, and we all sprang from that, and all we've got left of that original habitat is a couple small enclaves, which not coincidentally happen to have grizzly bears. I think that uh, our destinies, us and the grizzly bears, may be more mingled than we ever imagined. If we can save these bears, we can save ourselves. 